the material. So you've got a pretty good idea as to exactly where the grain is. The other important piece of information that you need to know is the thickness of the material. That's very important. The third piece of information that you probably need to know is you need to know over what sort of a radius you're going to bend this piece of sheet metal. We don't bend sheet metal over tight um, like knife edge type of bending brakes. We have a bending brake that has a nose bar on it that is, has a built-in radius. You can see that the nose bar in this case has a 1 8 radius on it. So the important things to know are grain direction, nose bar radius, and material thickness. When you get a drawing of a piece of material that they want you to bend up, they'll give you specifications. In this case, 6 inches on one leg, 8 inches on the other leg, uh, and those dimensions are from the end of the piece of metal to the flat on the opposing side. We can see that we have a 1 8 radius that we're going to bend the material around and we'll be using 040 or 40 thou aluminum. We're going to make it about 6 inches wide so that's the other dimension that we might want to know about. But the main one that we're concerned with are the two legs that need to be bent and around what sort of a radius we're going to use. The best way to figure out what the actual material is in that area where we're bending it around the radius is to use a bend allowance chart. The bend allowance chart shows us the actual material that will be used up in the bend. You can see here that bend allowance represents that material between the two black lines on the piece of aluminum. So what you need to know is your uh, bending radius and your material thickness to figure out on the chart the bend allowance. Bend allowance usually has two numbers. It gives you a big number, in this case 0.224, to bend around a 90 degree angle and it'll also give you another number that you can multiply by the number of degrees that you're bending. Setback is a formula that we use in order to figure out the actual final developed length of each of the flat legs on the 90 degree bend. Again, once the two most important key features that we need to know are what, are what is our radius that we're bending the material around and what is the thickness of the material. So setback SB is actually equal to the bend radius plus the thickness of the material. So in this case it's 1 8th 0.125 plus 040. So our total setback is 0.165. So to find the developed length of one of the legs, we take the length that the drawing shows and we subtract setback. So in this case, it's 6 inches minus 0.165, which equals 5.875. So you can see here, our original length was 6 inches. We take off the thickness of the material we take off the radius of the bend and what we're left with is the final developed length of 5.835. That setback. So we would do the exact same thing with the other leg. The next thing we're going to look at is called the developed length. So what we're going to look at here will be the actual total length of the material that we're going to cut. You'd think if one leg was 6 inches and one leg was 8 inches that the whole piece of material would end up being about 14 inches long. But actually in having the radius in our bend we actually end up saving some material. So we have the two individual flat sections and 
we have the bend allowance. There's our bend allowance, BA, and we have leg one and leg two. So leg one is the desired length or the drawing length of six minus 0.165. The other leg is eight minus 0.165. And by the bend allowance chart, we found out that our bend allowance is 0.224. So the total length is the sum of length 1 plus length 2 plus our bend allowance. So in this case, it's 5.835 plus 7.835 plus 0.224. Giving us a total of 13.894. See, we saved some material. Didn't have to use the whole 14 inches. And with that length, when we cut it exactly to 13.894, when we put it in the bending break and bend it, we'll end up with exactly a leg 6 inches long and a leg that's 8 inches long. Are we ready to start bending? I don't know. I think there's a few more things that we might have to do. How about another airplane to finish the page? The next thing we're going to look at is this thing called a sight line. The sight line is a tool that we have that shows us when we have put just the right amount of material into the break in order to start the bend right at the edge of the bend allowance. The bend sight line allows us to get our eyes directly above the bending break looking down onto the piece of material and know that we can start bending the material at just the right spot. The first thing that we need to know when we have or we want to lay down a sight line is that we need to have that sight line exactly one radius away from the actual edge of our bend allowance. So from the edge of the flat, we want to go in until we have the edge of our bend allowance, which is shown here as the red dotted lines. We have our two flats, flat one and flat two. And we know exactly what those dimensions are because we just figured those dimensions out using our setback. So in this case, flat two is our eight inch long flat. And we know that the actual dimension of flat two is 7.835 inches from its end. From the 7.835 that takes us to the edge of the bend allowance. So now what we need to do is we need to add 1 8 of an inch or 0.125 from that point and we need to make a mark on both sides of the sheet and have a line that goes in between the two of them. That line is now our sight line. The sight line is there to show us that that's the point that we want directly flush with the end of the bending break when we put the piece of material into the break. One of the very important things to remember is, and what I always do, is put an arrow on the side that you're sliding in to the break. Because if you happen to accidentally spin it around and put the wrong side in, the bend is not going to work out. So make sure you slide the correct side into the break. It's a very important skill. We're almost there. Getting close to putting that piece of material into the break. Okay, so here's our break. See, it says the break. Got a handle there for 
crunching down to hold our piece of material. We've got the arm that comes out the front. It actually is what we use to, to bend the piece of material. There's the bending arm. That rotates up 90 or more degrees. And we have our piece of material that we put into the bending brake. Now, we have a couple lines on our piece of material. The most important line being our sight line. And that's the red mark on the piece of material there. So when we have our sight line, we slide it in, we slide the piece of material into the bar until our eye is directly above the bending brake bar and we look straight down onto that sight line and make sure that it touches flush to the end of that bending brake. That way we know that the bend allowance line starts right where the material is going to start to be bent around that bend radius. Well, they look happy. I think we're getting close. Hey, we need to get bent. Once you get that piece of material in exactly where you want it into the bending brake, we can grab that bending arm and start bending our material up to 90 degrees. Now aluminum is kind of springy and so we actually have to bend it a little bit past the 90 degree mark, usually about 10% past. As you bend more and more material, you'll get a feel for what is just about perfect for getting that 90 degree bend. The material tends to spring back and try to go back to its original shape. So when we bend it, we need to just add 